Today I will talk about the German army expansion from 1933 to 1939. So basically after the National Socialists took over in 1933 to the beginning of the Second World War. Big thank you here to all my Patreons for voting on this topic. Now in 1933 there is still a limited expansion. The National Socialists take over and Hitler promises the generals to reintroduce conscription, but he doesn't say when. Because the situation for Germany is still rather insecure. The army is still very small size, around 100,000 men. And what is different is the existing projects are the funding is all confirmed immediately. So there's more funding and recruitment is also basically doubled. Another, in, an, another aspect that happens is the Reichswehr, the German armed forces at this point, will train the Sturmabteilungen, the, the Nationalist Stormtroopers. So to build up a reserve for the Reichswehr. And also in fall, Germany leaves the League of Nations and France and the United Kingdom's reaction is very limited. So Germany is basically confirmed in its course and, and Hitler continues to, to diplomatically talk bilaterally with France and the United Kingdom and tells, okay, I want to have 300,000 man army for peace. Just so basically three times the numbers we have now. This is our goal. And in October 1933, the number is already at 112,000, but not a major increase. So a bit more than 10% increase. So now let's look at 1934. Now, the expansion of the army is driven only by politics, basically. The military is not really happy with this. The German military was always focused on, on high quality, elite training and everything. And also they are not happy that there's no conscription, because you need this. So they basically say we have a permanent mobilization, which is not good to build a, a lasting strong army and a, a high quality army and it's very expensive. Then another aspect is there are not enough officers. They refer to it basically as a Frühgeburt, as a premature birth, because it, everything happens too fast. We should also take into account that the Reise was basically complete opposite. In the Reichswehr, nearly nobody was promoted and everybody was basically trained to fill out a role neck one or two above him, usually. So who would command a, a, a platoon would be trained to be a company or battalion commander, basically. So you had a very small elite force and now it's completely opposite. It's just let's grow and grow. So of course, then this major shift is, is not in the, in the sense of the officer corps. Then additionally, the technical officers note, we need to have a concrete plan. We need a, a, a very thought out plan over several years for the industry, because the industry plans in years and must allocate resources and capacities. So we need to know what we are building for exactly, which is also a problem. So now we're in winter 1934, 1935. The Panzer I comes now into production and goes into serious production. And already in 1934, in October, we have now 250,000 men. So more than doubled in one year, the number of, of the men in the army. Now, 1935 is very important. In January, there's the Saarland referendum and 90% vote for the reunification with Germany. And then comes in March, 1935, the major change Conscription is reintroduced and the Reichswehr is renamed into Wehrmacht. So this is a major aspect because it also breaks the another very important part of the Versailles Treaty. And we, we have a uh, change in names. At this point we have about 280,000 men under weapons. And of 189 infantry battalions planned, only 109 are ready. And in total there are 12 Panzers ready. So as you can see, it's too fast and there's a lack of material everywhere. And basically the Heeres Personalamt, the army personal office, notes no expansion for 1936. We don't want this anymore because we have a serious lack of officers. And the officer ratio right now is at 1.7 percent, whereas seven is, uh, whereas three is considered okay and seven is the goal. So the, the number rises to about 2.4% with the Ergänzungsoffiziere, which are replacement officers, but they are usually not considered up to scratch sometimes. So, and the elitist view of the Germans is always, yeah, well, we need that number. 
And another major problem for the military is that the Rhineland is not remilitarized yet. So basically the, the, around the border to France, there's no military. So in case of a war, the, 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 the French forces could just march over. So this is a huge strategic problem. And now in October 1935, we already have 400,000 men. So basically four times that of 1933, almost. Now 1936 is very important, the remilitarization of the Rhineland. But this happens very cautiously initially. They only send three infantry battalions. So not to, to draw up any, any problems that there's no an escal not an escalation to a war. The remilitarization of the Rhineland is of course very important because now the border to France is better secured. This weak point or weak area, which I mentioned before, is gone. Additionally, way more manpower and very important parts of German heavy industries are located there. So the armaments industry also increases. Then still the military notes, this is all too expensive. And we have now two options. We, we need to reduce the speed of the expansion or we need to see action. We need to see action. We, we must have a war sooner or later because this doesn't add up. We, we can't continue this way. And Hitler notes, not, not as answer to this, but in general, he declares in four years, the Wehrmacht and the industry must be ready for war. He declares this publicly and also in an internal memorandum, in a Denkschrift. So basically, three years before the war starts, he notes, okay, in four years, we should be ready for war. So for 1940. And the plan for 1936 is basically to have 102 divisions ready in October 1939. And in real life, in September 1939, the German army reached 103 divisions. So one might argue, hey, everything went fine. Which is not entirely clear, uh, which is not particularly true, because in this original planning, it was not assumed that Austria nor Czechoslovakia were, would be integrated. And this is very important. So with the Anschluss, the, the occupation of Austria, there's a lot of manpower and equipment gained as is with the end of Czechoslovakia. And from the, about nine Austrian divisions are basically reorganized and redistributed to five German divisions. And the war material from Czechoslovakia is estimated to be sufficient for 15 divisions. So there's a lot of equipment and manpower incoming that wasn't there earlier. I mean, 15 divisions is equipment. This is more than, I mean, this is about 15% of the number they reached in 1939 in war material. Also in October 1936, the number is now at 520,000 men. So basically a five time increase from 1933. Now, the the timeline from 1937 to 1939 is basically a lack of resources and further expansion. There are major resource problems. For instance, only 50% of the copper that is needed is there. There's also a lack of iron and steel just for the, for the production of war material. But additionally, the Westwall, the fortification in, in the, on the Western Front, is also being built, which also requires steel and iron and other equipment. So there's this major yeah, resources, they are not there. And the industry is to certain degrees is at 50% of its capacity due to the lack of resources at certain points and sometimes under 50%. So the expansion is, is continuing. So in, in 37, in October, the number is about 590,000 men. And one year later in October, 1938 at 760,000 men. As you see, it's, it's continually increasing about, about 100 to 150,000 men per year. Now, here's the very important and interesting aspect. In summer 1939, the field army is not considered ready to war. The German military leadership notes, this field army is not ready for war. And basically the officers in the memoirs later wrote the same. So they consider it, we can't go to war with, with, with the Heer, with, the, with that part of the Wehrmacht which to a certain degree probably is quite ironic considering the early successes of the Wehrmacht. 
But yeah, that's what they thought was the situation. To summarize, from 1933 to 1939, the German armies were a continuous increase every year besides 1933. The increase was about 100 to 150,000 men each year. The military wasn't particularly happy with this situation. The expansion was mostly driven by political matters. And the military wanted a slower expansion, but a more fundamental one. So they wanted conscription from the very get-go and they wanted to have a proper officer education. Especially since the officer ratio was very low. Another problem was there was a major lack of war material, which could to certain be circumvented by the Anschluss and especially by the end of Czechoslovakia, which provided around material for 15 divisions. The industry had major problems in just before the war because there was a lack of resources and this sometimes produced far under capacity. So in many ways the rearmament was very, very improvised and, and very haphazardly done. So as always, sources in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.